Welcome back to another Saint of the Week video. This week we have a change of scenery mostly so I could give you the friendly reminder that whoop, he is sovereign. Uh, if you're like me, especially right now in quarantine, I have to remind myself all the time of three very simple but very true and necessary truths. And that is that God is good, God is trustworthy, and God is sovereign. And so if you're needing that reminder today, there it is. And just know that I am praying for you that you would find peace in clinging to these truths and just remember that uh, God does not fail. It's not his nature. He never has, and he's not going to start now. So with that being said, today is the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker. And this video is going to look a little bit different because I think most of us already know about St. Joseph and what we know about him from scripture. And so we're going to talk about something a little different uh, involving him. But first, to recap, we know that St. Joseph was a carpenter and just really hardworking and devoted to his vocation as a carpenter. And whenever he found out from the angel uh, what was happening with Mary being pregnant with Jesus and what God was asking of him, he was just so obedient and continued to live a life of just pure obedience and love and just doing everything in his power to take care of and provide for and protect uh, his foster son Jesus as well as Mary his wife. And so there are a few reasons that I chose him as our saint today. The most obvious being that it's uh, the feast of St. Joseph the Worker. We also celebrated a feast on March 19th for St. Joseph. The second reason is that he is actually the patron of workers. And I know a lot of us right now are struggling with unemployment, uh, whether you're a teen and it's yourself or your parents, or if you're a parent struggling with it, or maybe you're not unemployed, but your job just looks different or you have a different role. Uh, so what better time to turn to him and ask for his intercession as the patron saint of workers. And the third reason, and probably my favorite and the biggest reason I chose him was, uh, because a lot of us are spending more time with our families right now, I think, than we normally would because we're all home. And St. Joseph is definitely the most overlooked member of the Holy Family out of him, Jesus, and Mary. But there's just still so much to learn from him and things that we can aspire, virtues that he had that we can aspire to have and live out as well. And St. Joseph just truly embodied what it means to be a man of God. So he's an example for fathers and for men, uh, but also for all of us just to love the people that God places in front of us, especially our families, and just to give all we have and love people with everything we have as an overflowing of our relationship with the Father and the love that we receive from him. And so the cool thing about St. Joseph is that there's actually a consecration to St. Joseph. And you might have heard of it. I actually just learned about it within the past year. But there's also a Marian consecration, which is more common. And you may have heard of that one. But both are basically the act of entrusting yourself to either Mary or Joseph. And um, in doing that, one, wanting to become a more like them, but also asking them to uh, help you know and love their son better and uh, to become a saint. And so a website talks about it and they say that the first person to entrust themselves to the spiritual care of Joseph and Mary was actually Jesus. And so we give ourselves to their care, just like Jesus did when he was growing up. He lived under their roof, he was under their care, and he didn't just go to his mom, he went to his dad as well. So that's what it is entrusting ourselves to St. Joseph's spiritual fatherhood to help us grow in virtue and closer to Christ. And so there's a lot of different books, but I will go ahead and link in our caption or the comments uh, the two that I'm most familiar with. I completed my Marian consecration probably about four years ago, and I'm actually going to do St. Joseph this summer. But I encourage everyone, even if at the end of it you don't feel called or ready to consecrate yourself just yet just to read the books and learn more about our mother Mary and uh, about Joseph and just see 
what it's all about and how we can really uh, look to them for guidance and help in our relationships with Jesus. And I mean, who better to ask uh, to help us know and love and imitate Jesus than his mother and his foster father. Like they're just incredible. So I really encourage you to look into consecration to both St. Joseph and to Mary. And I want to go ahead and close with a prayer to St. Joseph and I'll put it on the screen so y'all can either read it with me or just listen and pray along. So in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Blessed St. Joseph, I consecrate myself to your honor and give myself to you that you may always be my father, my protector, and my guide in the way of salvation. Obtain for me great purity of heart and a fervent love of the interior life. After your example, may I perform my actions for the greater glory of God in union with the divine heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary. Pray for me, St. Joseph, that I may experience the peace and joy of your holy death. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. So thank you for joining us. Look into consecration to St. Joseph and Mary. Remember that God is sovereign. He's not going to fail you and that we're all praying for you here at Epiphany. We love you. We'd love to hear your prayer request and we can't wait to hopefully see you soon as we celebrate Mass in the Eucharist. Love y'all.